Hey, welcome once again to Talk and Fight. Tonight I have joining me, Christian and uh, Mike. What's going on? We're going to talk about uh, the Roy Jones Jr. Mike Tyson fight that happened uh, 24 hours ago. <laughs> and of course, the, uh, the uh, other fights that took place. Oh, um, God. Yeah, I'll, I'll give uh, I'll give uh, the executive producers credit the, the credit that they're due for uh, their production, if you will, and uh, the new kinds of sponsors that they brought on board, uh, introducing uh, Weed Maps to a whole new generation of boxing fans. I'm sure. Um, anyway, well, they, uh, they definitely need weed after a match like that. <laughs> well, me, I, me I, I Robinson probably around. need some weed after that match, actually. I'd say, yep. they, I would say they were smoking weed before that fight. Um, so, <laughs> you call that a fight? It looked like two guys hung at each other wildly. That. I know. Oh, well, I won't, I won't lie. A lot, of these guys have been, a lot of these guys have been talking about the production value and how it was directed and, you know, camera angles and stuff like that they used. And I think part of that is the reason is the title fight there wasn't all that interesting. Uh, they did have great production value. They did the stark black and white, you know, right down the white, uh, white ropes. Uh, as opposed to you trying to figure out, are there empty seats that are around them? They just blacked everything out, all focus on the actual ring itself. So it didn't matter whether it was, you know, 10,000 people in the, uh, in the stands or whether it was nobody as it was. So the, the production, I think that end of it was handled kind of, yeah, that was handled well, but the actual fights themselves, uh, where do you guys want to start? You want to start on the undercard? Yeah, we're <laughs> <our> way up. <laughs> Honestly, I don't even know if we should waste our time talking about some of these fights, man. Some of them are so horrible. Um, I, I, well, yeah, let's start. Let's start okay, start or, okay so or, or, or Ortiz Sagawa. Uh, you see, at least when, when, when you're talking about guys like this, they're, they're throwing shots. It was entertaining to watch, at least. I, you know else. what? It was, it was entertaining, but they had to compete against a, a UFC fight night last night as well. So there was a lot of things going on. Uh, I know I fully I fully didn't watch the UFC, but I did watch this boxing the whole way. Uh, it was kind of entertaining. I did see some new camera angles that I was interested in, which was awesome. Um, like these were young guys, though. I mean, these guys haven't been fighting very long, so you weren't seeing like a master class in technique or anything like that. No, but, not, I mean, they were not at all. <laughs> not at all. It was but good, did... and you know, we did see, and you did get to see a knockout in that fight as well. Yeah, very true. Very true. Very true. Uh, you know, you know what's uh, my my favorite fight though had to be um, when Nate Robinson became the uh, four time Slam Dunk champion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna skip over Badu Jack then. Uh, yeah. And McCur yeah, that, and McCurn that, in there. You no, know, that Badu Jack fight was that, that was pretty good, man. That went the distance, I believe. Yeah. It did. Yeah, went, it went. Yeah. That, that was a great. And that fight. was questionable knew, because McKernan was looking pretty rough come the end of the seventh and all through the eighth. He was. Yeah. Of, no, that's that's He was true. basically that's just true. hiding behind his gloves. He was, they, that was a good, that was a good fight, man. I think that fight actually was like the, the fight the fight of the night, really. Uh, that one, those guys have battled it out pretty well. You know, they both they both they were warriors. And then you know, the, there's the least to talk about because it was a decent fight to actually watch. Yeah, yeah, you know, and then everything else was kind of like a sideshow act. You know, the the, the headliners, two fifty year olds that you know looked like they would should be hugging each other rather than fighting. <laughs> you know, you know, it was funny, honestly. Though. honestly yeah, the, go ahead, the, the, the commentators, the commentators saying, "Oh, that's a, that's a veteran move." You know, it's like, what are you talking about? I was expecting a slugfest from the get go. Yeah, you know, With, well, no, no, I, I don't know. I did, that's it. I, I was expecting a heavy duty fist fight. Well, hold on before yeah. before we jump on onto uh, onto Tyson there. Let, let's finish up. Uh, you know, with, oh, uh, with Jake Paul. With, with the Jake Paul fight there. Did, oh, did it, when, it, when it actually happened, did anyone actually see that shot to the liver? No, no, well, no. He was they like he was standing. I, I had to watch the replays. I had to go back and I'm, hang on. What just happened? Because I didn't see anything. He was that's why they kept calling it a phantom shot. And just he's there, and all of a sudden he's a nice on it. He's taking a knee and going. Oh wow! What? Yeah, no, I'll have to go. I'll have to go back and watch that tape. I was did, didn't even low. didn't even see it happen uh, like in real time. Had to go back and rewatch it, and it didn't look like much. It looked like a little tap, but he must have just connected in the exact right way, and then he never recovered after that. You know, that, that, <laughs> everything after that, you could see his elbow was tucked right, and he was guarding kind of his liver at uh, at all costs through the whole uh, through the whole experience, and that just left him wide open for for Jake Paul just. Surprisingly enough, it was funny to hear Snoop Dogg uh, commentating on the side. He was there. he he was the saving grace of the entire thing. 
Well, he did. He did save it because, first of all, Little Wayne was supposed to perform, and then decided not to get on the plane like six or eight hours before the show. Didn't show up, and uh, they brought in that guy Saint John last minute, and I believe uh, Wiz Khalif, and then Snoop's like, "Yeah, don't worry, I'll help it out, man." And then it was like a fifteen-minute friggin', you know, nineteen ninety Snoop Dogg concert there for a little bit, and, and, and with these guys smoking, the, did you see the joints these guys were smoking out there? The oh, yeah. shit, man. <laughs> well, when so you've got know. Snoop Dogg and sponsored by Weed Maps, you kind of you have to. Yeah, and, and yeah, and Snoop Dogg. What are you gonna do? Was like, right? he, he's he's part of that. What's it called? Trill. Is it yeah, Trill? Who, who, who owns that? Anyone... Uh, I don't know who owns it, but I believe he's part of it. Huh. I believe he's an investor in it, and that's why he's in Triller, yeah. Triller, that's Triller. it. Yeah. Well, he was the best part. When we got onto the actual Tyson Jones match, I was losing my mind. I mean, when I watched it in real time, I was focused much more on the fight. But when I went back and watched it again today, I was I was laughing my ass off the whole time because there's Snoop Dogg in the corner saying, you know, this looks like two of my uncles at a barbecue. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> and then he's screaming, oh "Grandma's gonna have to come break this one up." And <coughs> I was, I was losing it. The, co- the commentating him. last night was crazy. The commentating last night was like one-liners off the, yeah, off well, the top of the head. Like, Snoop Dogg singing hymns over in the corner. As yeah. The fight's like, going on. Like, he was, he was the best part of the entire fight. <laughs> honestly, he kept me sane. He kept me sane through it. I'll tell you that much. I, I, honestly, I thought Mike Tyson was gonna come out and really just, you know. Hammered out. I thought it was gonna be a slugfest, but honestly, me, I think well, these the guys beginning might have of the first match, it looked like it might have been the beginning yeah. of the first match. It, it it almost looked like a boxing match was good. The first round, I keep saying the first match. Uh, the beginning of the first round, it almost looked like we were in danger of a boxing match actually breaking out. Right. Like you know, it it, it was it. They looked good. They were looking they did. sharp. They, did. they looked like they were actually going to start throwing some some blows. And then we then we reverted back to um, what were they calling it? Like hard sparring. Yeah, hard sparring my ass. <laughs> oh, I mean, by the fourth round, by the fourth round, all the all the commentators are going. Well, let's everyone just remember that these are two fifty-year-old men, and uh, let's temper. <laughs> our, I mean, they even said there's let's temper our expectations at this point in time of what we're going to be seeing from I'm this point you, forward. I'm right? telling you, after that match, man, the arena probably smelled like weed smoke and Bengay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not so much that it did; it's that it will. Continue to smell yeah, that way I for know. the foreseeable future. Oh my god! And they called it a draw. Like what? These guys are going to fight again? Jesus! Come on! I mean, well, they honestly, were, they I, were I, scoring I was blown, it pretty close. The, the 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 headgear. There was no headgear, man. I thought they were supposed to. I was in, I was impressed. That was a late announcement. I think that they yeah, that they decided that's, they uh, weren't doing the headgear. So you know, there was a couple shots there that I saw the Tyson connected, and I'll tell you that those those bigger gloves, man, they they made all the difference because. There were a few shots that I seen land that uh, I believe that if Tyson was wearing those ten ounces from you know the pro days when he was actually fighting, uh, I think he would there would have been a knockout. But I, it's almost like he couldn't. It's almost like he couldn't finish it last night. It's like it's like the combos didn't flow like they did naturally. You know, well he's also been out of the ring for fifteen years, so let's put that into perspective. Well, right? Jones's entire you know his entire technique. He said it going in from the beginning was he was going to be counter punching. So the whole time he spent the entire match trying to get tyson to overextend himself yeah and tyson, and tyson just didn't fall for it no i mean he, he did you know because i mean he did connect a couple of times he did connect a couple of a couple of good shots actually yeah uh but he wasn't even looking when he did it it's it was like one of those as he was moving kind of things that he, yeah. that he connected and it was it was it was cool it was it was fun to watch uh you know <laughs> bits and pieces of it but it was yeah, Snoop's not, uncle's at a barbecue. You know what? It wasn't as it wasn't as fun as watching Nate Robinson get crowned four times slam dunk champ. <laughs> Honestly, though, I mean, if you look he at the numbers, that's so hard, man. They should have gave him a trophy. I think the ref threw more more punches than either one of them during that match, during the the Robinson oh. uh, Paul match. I think the ref threw more than anyone else. I mean, at one point in time, he pushed the bargo guys. What are we doing here? Yeah, you know who else threw more punches? The guy sitting next to Snoop Dogg who was trying to punch all the smoke out of his face to watch that boring ass fight. Wow. Well, I mean, Robinson spent half that fight with his head in uh, in Paul's armpit. Yeah, yeah, man. I, I guess he likes the way he smells. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, and to be fair, yeah, first professional fight, second professional fight. Again, you weren't going to see a ton of technique. It was going to be mostly based on conditioning. Who could stay Definitely. on their feet the longest? That, that's what you know what? I was very, I was very impressed with the conditioning, man. The conditioning of those two older gentlemen, like, you know, like, well, let's let's be real. Roy Jones fought what two years ago? Uh, three, was, I he, think. Uh, two yeah. or three, yeah, two or three years ago, I believe. 
And, and Tyson hasn't hasn't fought in 15, but has been training for the last three steadily. Well, dropped 100 pounds for this fight. Yeah. Tyson was up, uh, you know, he was tipping the scales around 320 before he decided he was going to come back and do this. So Yeah, well, they had to make sure that he snacked so that he wouldn't eat any years in the ring, right? <laughs> <laughs> they had him well fed in the back room. Uh, on another level, it was interesting, too, that uh, this LOL debut was able to break the mold with respect to uh, boxing because you only had eight rounds. You only had two-minute rounds. So you only had 16 minutes worth of fighting, really. Uh, so a kind of a short burst, if you will. Now, if it had been a good fight, I, I wouldn't be complaining, if you will, because uh, I sure should ain't get, I'm not, I'm not going to get in the ring anytime soon. But, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll give credit where credit's due, as I said before. But uh, I think it's broken the mold now, and I think it allows uh, for a more exciting – you know, as opposed to the people who control boxing right now, right, uh, it allows for more, uh, shall we say, creativity. Because if this LOL league is really going well, go to go anywhere, it's going to have to rely on these new rules, uh, establish these new fighters, old fighters. Well, I, I believe, I believe. Well, we're going to see another entity entering boxing really soon. It's um, UFC man, Dana White. Dana White has uh, just announced that they will be promoting Clarissa Shields next fight that she will be uh i can't believe i don't know the exact dates we'll find it out later we'll announce it to everybody out there in viewer land but uh apparently dana white and the ufc are going to be getting into promoting boxing and uh clarissa shields has also talked about making the jump as a pro boxer and moving into the mma world and uh we've also heard amanda nunez saying that she wants to step into the ring as well as a boxer. So we're going to see a lot of cross promotions, which when Floyd Mayweather fought Conor McGregor, that was a whole, you know, that was a, that, that was a new, a new, I guess, a, a new way to bring new fans to the, to the boxing world. And now with these people going to cross, you know, these cross fighters, you're going to, you're going to have these fans cross promoting and watching the different promotions, which is going to be good. And now UFC is going to start capitalizing on that. It's going to bring some fresh investors into it. You're going to see some new money coming back into boxing again. For sure, for sure, and 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 for them to get, a, a, you know, for their, their first fight, again, I think it was Showtime was supposed to put it on, but backed out due to coronavirus, and uh, Dana White and UFC have stepped up, and for them to get this fight, Clarissa Shields, you know, aka the baddest woman in boxing, yeah, that's, a, that's, that's a big one for your first promotions, you know, and especially it being UFC and, and you know, the names that are all attached to it, man, like, I, I think, I think UFC may may create a, a boxing league that is like no other. And and with this new LOL league for these old guys, this is, you know, boxing is really starting to come, coming into a new wave. It'll be interesting to see what happens with this. Cause you know, they're adding music. They're taking away the fans. Cause obviously they have to at the moment. And, you know, they're putting the focus right back on the fights themselves. It's great. You can hear the, you know, when the leather connects, you can hear the coaches screaming in the corner. You don't I say have put them in four ounce gloves, man. <laughs> Well, that's, that's it. Let's but, put boxers I mean, in four ounce gloves, well, make it interesting. Let's watch real knockouts happen. So, but my point is when, when we start seeing the scaled back version where we, you know, we're going to introduce music and, uh, you know, and uh, all these other aspects into it, we're going to shorten down the time, uh, you know, the times of the rounds and the number of rounds and things like that, where we, we run into a danger. Is it becoming like the arena football league of boxing? Huh. You mean like Vince McMahon's failed XFL? <laughs> this is this is this is my point right they would, this is exactly what that was this is they tried you know oh, well, no, we're gonna make it younger and cooler one well, league of legends or sorry, uh, honestly yeah, the production LOL, last, not the production last younger, night but... i don't know how you guys feel about it but i thought the production was pretty bang on man it was and, 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 and right and, now but that's because they yeah. have to so it's whether or not that model still is going to make sense once they're allowed to have fans back in the stands again yeah, that, and then, that's you know what? I'd like, to see, I'd like to see the viewer numbers actually of you know um, how many people watch UFC over boxing last night. It'd be nice to see those kind of statistics. Uh, sorry, statistics. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I haven't looked them up. Uh, we'll, we'll figure that out and see how, actually how it did. But I thought the oh. production the production value was was spot on, and I and I think you know what, for forty nine ninety nine, I think you got your dollars worth. You know, for last night, like even though it was a joke. Not really a joke, but more joke. Yeah, it was a joke. <laughs> Let's be honest. Well, here's the uh, thing, and this is kind of, they they had to talk about tempering your our expectations in the Tyson Jones match, but they didn't talk about that at all beforehand because they still needed everybody to buy the pay per view. 
Yeah. So okay. so they so they they were they weren't they weren't using terms like hard sparring. Uh, you know, coming up with these guys about to you know you know give us your money, come watch these guys hard spar. Yeah, you know what? what Honestly, what... they didn't start talking tempering tempering your expectations until you. I believe the, I believe the WBC created a belt for those two guys as well. That is still vacant because they you know came to a draw. But uh, I think if these guys are going to do it again, last night just proved that uh, you know. 16 ounce gloves, man. Like they don't, they shouldn't be using that shit. You know, give them, give them, make these guys are professional boxers, man. Over a hundred fights between them both. And you put pillows on their hand, man. Let these guys go, guys go out of with 10 ounce gloves, man. You know, they're warriors. They've been in that ring. They've been in that situation. And, um, you know, it goes to show you last night, maybe, maybe we don't have to worry about that. Well, whose rule was it to give them 16 ounce gloves? That might've been, that might've been. The WBC. The WBC okay. said that they wouldn't, they wouldn't, I didn't hear them complaining. Though. That's my point. Is I didn't I didn't hear Tyson and John going. Oh, if only they had given us. You know, I didn't hear any of that. Yeah. So they're well, they going, didn't think they're about going, it. Right? Oh, they, they, they have to. Oh, okay. I suppose no. They said I have to. These yeah. Are, yeah. Oh, that's the way yeah. it was, right? Like the WBC said, you guys want to fight? Cool. We're gonna put pillows on your hands and we're gonna freaking give you headgear. Thank God they didn't have the headgear because oh my God, that would have been a snoozer. Can you imagine those two just standing in the ring, button heads all match? It would have been ridiculous. So they did do. Um, yeah, but at least at least there could have been damage done there. You know, at least ears were at least somebody's ears were vulnerable. Snoop, we, you know, we could have had you oh know another God. Holyfield incident. Snoop Dogg always killing me because every time that uh, they'd end up in a clinch, he'd start screaming. You know, Roy, get get your ribs out of there. Get your ribs out of there. And then he started screaming at one point, "Get them ribs off the grill." Get your ribs off the grill. And it's just <laughs> the rest of these guys are trying. The rest of these guys are trying to, you know, comment, you know, comment on the fight. And there's just Snoop just losing it in the corner, screaming, "Get your ribs off the grill!" It's the best He's, part like, of the whole fight. His comment, his commentary was so like comedic last night that it had me in stitches at some points listening good, to this yeah. guy talk. And and you think like, man, how much weed are you smoking during this production? First of all, to like say half the crap that's coming out of your mouth, man. It was it was unreal. All right, I, I, see, I, see, I see we have to uh, get up air. Okay. Um, okay uh, well, I'll tell you what. My last comment is uh, I thought the word grappling was reserved for wrestling matches. I'm pretty sure if they promoted a grappling match, I don't think they would have got half the amount of viewers. I think on the YouTube channels, uh, I had something like 10 million views this morning. You know, So, I mean, there's a lot of people out there who are watching it after the live event. Christian, any last comments? Uh, I think it's going to be, I mean, we've talked enough about how the actual fights themselves went in, you know, mostly a disappointment, not all of them. Um, but it'll be interesting to see if um, the way what they've done now with the productions uh, themselves to see if they have created a new mold on how to do this, both, uh, you know, well, you know, during the time of a pandemic where you can't have people in the stands. And it'll be interesting to see if this new, uh, you know, this new way that they're doing things here is going to translate once people are back. You know, so there's still going to be time for the music and for, uh, you know, for, you know, a six man panel with Snoop Dogg on it. You know, it's it'll be interesting to see how this looks moving forward. Right. I'm curious. Yeah. Honestly, it was it, it was everything I expected it was going to be truly LOL league. <laughs> truly. It was it was laughable. It was fun. It was great entertainment. You know, I watched it with a few friends. Their kids watched it. It was funny. It brought it brought a few generations of people together to watch a combative sport. I think it did well for it. I think it's going to do well in the future. Um, I think boxing boxing's got a lot of growing to do right now. It's uh, it's in a it's in a certain stage of its life where where it could lose horribly or or triumph. And uh, I don't know. I think they got to do some changes, man. They got to do some changes in the boxing to make it a little more exciting. I think one of the changes to come would be the introduction of female fighters. That was one of the complaints I saw today. Uh, why yeah. were there no female fighters? There should have been. There should, there's there's tons of female fighters that would have loved the opportunity to get in the ring and, and we, fight last. And night. we have one joining us next week, uh, Little Tyson. Coming, Later this week or next week? Uh, this within was it five days? Okay. This this upcoming Friday night show. Um, she's agreed to join us, and uh, you know she's a Canadian champ and. Uh, I'm looking forward. To, I spoke to her actually privately. Little Tyson, I believe she's uh, 17 and two professionally, right? She's awesome, and she's got a lot yeah. of great thoughts, and uh, a lot of it has to do with uh, not just uh, 
your level of training, but how much training you can afford. So she's got a lot to say about uh, not just women in fighting, but fighting in general, and in particular, uh, boxing, the future of boxing. And, and it has to involve a greater number of women who are, who are doing so well these days, as we know, Katie Taylor being one. Um, Savannah Marshall, Clarissa Shields, there's, yep. there's tons of them, and like the list goes on, Indeed. you know. Um, uh, Christa, what was it, Christina? Oh, I can't even remember half of these women's name, man. I'm, I'm just learning this whole new women's thing, man, for me. But uh, I'm, I'm impressed with everything that I see, uh, honestly. Like, I, 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 I'm, I'm happy to see the dedication that these women are putting into their careers and their training. It's, it's, it's amazing, man. These women are nothing but role models for, for women today. It's great. I can't wait to talk to her on the show. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, it'll be amazing. I'm looking forward to it too. All right. Thanks very much, gentlemen. And thanks very much for watching us. This has been another episode of Talk and Fight. Uh, please subscribe to our channel and we'll see you next week.